STC Pod and the opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the presenters therein, without any affiliation or obligation to any establishment, either real or imagined, even if they wanted it. Now, get ready and hit start to continue. Hey guys, you're in for a special crossover episode this time. Uh, I couldn't keep these two guys apart. This is over two and a half years in the making, and they both finally showed up at my house at the same time. So just to introduce each of them, one is my co-host from Transformers and Beer, M. What's going on, everyone? And the other guy I work with, and my co-host for STC Pod, Bill. Yay! I made it in. You broke in, you mean. Well, did what I had to do. Forced your way into my house. Into a man's castle. Anyway, I uh, don't know how this one's going to go, but we've got three beers here. Well, two beers and a cider. Guess who's drinking the cider? Okay, um, we're going to have to uh, school Bill here in the tradition of uh, T&B. So like every good episode, uh, one of us treats the other to something cold and delicious to drink. And this time you've brought over, I know I've never had this before. Uh, it's called Spaten Munchen. <laughs> Is yeah. that right? That's how I would pronounce oh, it, yes. Ori- original from Munich. Yeah. And uh, now I, ju- I just brought the two beers tonight because we were, uh, you know, I was in for a special surprise when uh, when I got to your door. Bill was here. But uh, yeah, you said he's drinking a cider. He's drinking one of my wife's uh, dry pear ciders. Well, I'm not a beer guy myself, so, uh, and I'm driving. So I gotta take it easy, and so I'm drinking from the Okanagan apple ciders, a dry pear, a dry pear, very manly. Mm-hmm. All right, crack her open. All right. Ooh. All right. All right cheers, cheers, guys. It's pretty good. How do you like that pear? Yeah, smooth. You're drunk. So we'll start off by letting people know where they can find us. Uh, On the Transformers and Beer side, you can find me on Twitter at AC Decepticon. Uh, You can check out M on Instagram at Transformers and Beer. Bookmark angrycanadiandecepticon.blogspot.ca and listen to us on iTunes under the title search Transformers and Beer Podcast. As always, M and I want to give a big thanks to everybody for checking us out every Friday morning, which is when we post our new episodes. And every Monday when we upload our latest YouTube content. Now on with the show? Well, almost. We'll uh, introduce the STC Pod side. You can follow Bill on Twitter at STC Pod. You can bookmark stcpod.com and listen on iTunes under the title search STC Pod. And as well, if you're listening to them or us, why not check out some other great podcast blogs and videos from people in our community at cartridgeclub.org. That's some good improvising you just did. It was a little confusing. <laughs> yeah, for, for both of us. Well, this is exciting. Our listeners are going to get a little taste of uh, both of these podcasts that you are a part of. Worlds are colliding. It's crazy. Pretty wild, yeah. Bill, uh, or Joe had reduced us to just uh, Instagram mm-hmm. uh, friends. That's right. And now well, just the... We had to do that on The Secret, too. True, that was done in the download. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of information's been exchanged at this point about Joe. Yeah. Lots of trade secrets. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, I'll just let you guys talk and I'll just sit here then. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a big uh, Joe Bash episode, I think. I think that'll work. People will like that. I sure. should appreciate it. Just remember who's editing the show. So what we have to do, uh, you are still on vacation. I was working, so I had to get my Joe time in, so I... Uh, Forced your way into my house. Forced, forced my way into the palace. And uh, it happened to be a recording night for TMB, so I just had a big sit-in. That's right. You couldn't move me. Yeah. We just watched, uh, well, we'll get into it, but as as I'm sure you're aware of, uh, as a dedicated listener to TMB, we'd like to open the show off with what? I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> With what? With drinking. With what we did. What's new? What, oh, what's new? Yeah, yeah. Pickups. Oh, okay. I wanted to get into uh, your arriving at your house and all that jazz. Oh, well, we can get to it. Well, you wouldn't even let me park in the driveway? 
Because there's no room? Was that embarrassment or what? He ran out the door and met me in the driveway and pointed me down the road. No kidding. Was that, Joe? Is that what, do you get that or are you allowed in driveway? I was told, I'm normally told that uh, I can't park in the driveway either, but I'm allowed to block the driveway. Oh, well, that's a step. So, okay. Well, when you pulled up, Bill, I was actually walking the dog. So I just gave you the old finger point to the side of the curb. <laughs> it was funny because I didn't know uh, Bill was going to be here. So I was running a little late. Uh, I broke a glass at home right before I left. So I was cleaning that up and uh, hopped in the car, came over here, sent Joe a text because uh, I wasn't sure if he still had the kids here or what was going on, just to say I was here. So I start walking up to the door. My hands are full. These beers are almost falling out of my hands. I've got my pickups. And the door opens and I see a guy... <laughs> poke his face around the corner and I'm thinking, who the hell is that? <laughs> so I tried to play it off like it was no big deal. Maybe Joe had a guest or something or somebody was coming over because I was here another time before we did a record and Joe had a worker here doing uh, something with your hot water tank or something like that. So I thought, all right, Joe's got somebody here. So I, again, tried to play it off, got up to the door and at the last second I recognized it was Bill. Oh. Thank God. I actually peeked around the corner. It's like, is this the right house? <laughs> uh, Joe insisted we do some hijinks when you mm -hmm. showed up. There was hijinks. My anxiety level shot through the roof. What's going on here? <laughs> I thought it was funny, too, how uh, Joe has you text before you enter the house because no one's allowed. You, you can get into the gates at the driveway, but then there's another level of security to get in the house. Well, the, well and, and I even greased the, uh, the, the guy at the gate to get in. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, I didn't understand what the big deal was. Like, I got a text on top of it? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Well, in actuality, the kids are with me. The wife is away for uh, tonight and tomorrow. So it's just me and the two kids. So And they were sleeping, so that's why. Oh, you mean your actual two kids? I thought you were referring to me and Bill. Oh, yeah, no, so just my, two kids. the biological ones. All right. Yeah, I got to see them too when I arrived. You I get got, to meet I got the here kids. early. Yeah, I got here early enough, and uh, these these kids, these kids, I love. They're so cute and adorable and lovable. But he keeps them so sheltered. The minute his daughter saw me, a stranger in the house burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true? Just. First, then lip quiver. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, come on. It's that, uh, Help me out. You give off that vibe. Yeah. Okay. I, I love your attitude, Bill, about kids being coddled. You know, like everybody wins. You know, everybody who participates in the game wins. Uh, everybody graduates, <laughs> even from kindergarten. Yeah. You were uh, talking about that, I think, a couple of episodes ago in uh, STC, Start to Continue. And uh, yeah, I was getting a kick out of that. Mm. You're in the you're these sort of old school no coddling. You know. Yeah, well, I, I take the kids with me wherever I go. Uh, like I said to Joe, have you been out thrifting yet today? He's like, oh, I got I got the kids, can't go out. <laughs> to, to take the take the kids, I take the kids all the time. It's too much of a pain. They're slow. You make them if they're not catching up with me, they get left a couple aisles back, and then they catch up to you. <laughs> yeah, but your kids are older than mine. No, they're not. Now, in fairness, though, Joe, you tried this once, right? Wasn't it last summer? You brought the kids out to a garage sale, and you did have a couple of legit arguments. You said that they had to pee, they were getting hungry. Yeah, one had to throw up. <laughs> right. Because they were locked out of the house. Yes. They didn't know what that's, to do. I think that's anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it was a motion sickness or something. So, yeah, it was a... It's you know, just too much of a hassle. Forget it. I can understand the motion sickness, certainly with my experience of garage sailing. You know, start the car, drive a block, stop the car, run up to the garage, you know, the driveway, see what's going on, back to the car. If it's anything like my experience with it, I can see where the kids would get sick. Yeah, yeah, it could be. I don't know. It was only done once anyway. And enough of that. It's not. Uh, it's not worth my time. But you get them. You get them used to the experience, and they know. Yeah, I'm just going to sit in the car and watch Dad go check this out quick and run back. And you know, if it's a big yard sale, they they can come out. You know, the when kids come out to yard sales, they just spawn better deals for everybody. They get free stuff for one, and often they get you better deals just by shrapnel, cute shrapnel. Do the old trick we've seen at TFCon before, where take the item you're interested in. Take all the you know stack of retro games and have your son go up 
how much for these games? Oh, absolutely. What are they going to say? Oh, that's got a little hundred and twenty dollars right there. For the cute factor, you're looking at, oh, mm-hmm. for you, you know, yeah. what do you have in your pocket? Do I do a 50 cents a game? Yeah. I would totally use the cute factor if I were you. It works. They're not going to ask $20 a game when you're, I'm just thinking about these games for my little six-year-old here. Uh, you know. If, if it's a, is this the one you wanted? Yes, daddy. <laughs> in fact, can I take your kids' grass <laughs> with me? Just one of them, maybe? There you go. You can rent them out. Oh, I think that's a fantastic idea. There you go. Okay, how about we move into what's new and what's been going on, so as our guest. Yeah, but I know the fans of STC and TMB love to hear about Joe's life and Joe's house and all that, so I get no, I actually get to be in here. Can I at least describe this table? I've never sat at a table draped in velvet before, <laughs> well, <laughs> I hard, gotta say. The table's actually underneath of it. It is amazing. It is amazing. And people aren't gonna believe me, but this is a table draped in velvet. I, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it with my own two eyes. If I was here by myself, I'd just be naked on top of it, rolling back and forth. Could explain a few of these suspicious stains I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could. Uh, pickups, pickups, okay. Um, is it, I don't know, on the TMB podcast, is it okay to talk about video games? I know it's mostly Transformers by the... Uh, the we, format of the show, right? Transformers. We do, but we keep the gaming very minimal. Oh, okay. We keep it to about 30 minutes of the podcast. <laughs> about 30 minutes. I can go back. This is a couple weeks ago, uh, Yard Sailing. I don't think I talked about it in the, anywhere yet. Oh, I put it out on Twitter, maybe a picture a while ago. Um, ended up spending 50 bucks out there. Which I'm, I hate seeing that much cash go to the wallet. I did get some good stuff. Got a bunch of GameCube games. Uh, again, every one of these yard sales, I had to ask for the stuff. And uh, for the GameCube games, she's like, oh, yeah, I do have some, but they're back here because I wasn't sure what their value yet. Mm-hmm. And I thought, uh-oh. But then she let me look at them. And I asked her how much she wanted for them. And she didn't know. She's like, yeah, make me an offer. And I'm like, in my head... The last while or so, I've been getting video games for a dollar each. I don't care what they are. Or two dollars each. So for her, I upped it to two dollars. I said, I think there was uh, one, two, three, four. I guess just four. Hmm. No, there was another game too. There was another game I, I, I didn't end up getting. But anyways, I think I said two dollars each. And she, no, 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 I couldn't go less than five dollars. And these are really good games. So I thought, okay, $5. So Luigi's Mansion, Pokemon Coliseum, Mario Party 4, and the Zelda Collection. But the Zelda Collection was empty. Uh, inside of it was Super Smash Bros. Melee, which is an okay consolation. For sure. So I tried to play that off, too. Like, this is the wrong game. It's just the case. How about we $2 each on these three? You throw that in as a bonus. She wouldn't go for it. But I reluctantly gave her the money for it. And as a matter of fact, that Super Smash Melee, I have a case and manual already with no disc. So now I have the disc to go with that. Isn't that great? That works out. And uh, at another yard sale, there was, I asked again for video games, and the guy's like, uh, yeah, yeah, in the shed, I got to get a ladder. I don't know. I got to get a ladder to get these. Well, I'll help you. No problem. I'll hold the ladder. So we went back, and he said, it's all old, it's all old stuff. <clears throat> No problem. I'll carry the ladder. And we went back. There was all Xbox original stuff. So not super old, but it was still cool. Picked up some stuff. And he had uh, Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic. But the disc was missing. And I grabbed some other stuff and I left that one. It was a dollar each for these games. I think Morrowind was one of them and a couple PS2 games. I don't even remember. And I left. And then as I, I did a big circle in the neighborhood, and as I was driving back, I remembered, I freaking have that Knights of the Old Republic disc only. And this guy's got the case and the manual. So I stopped again. That had to be a doorknob. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, but actually, that one that I didn't want to take before, and he was still out back in his shed. I will take that. I just remembered I had it. He's like, okay, just take it. So he just gave me the box. So that was cool. Nice. 
And then some N64 stuff. Again, I had to fight for that. $20 for a box of this stuff. It had a bunch of, you know, common games, except it had Doom 64 in it, which was good. And a couple controllers and a transfer pack. Um, 20 bucks for all that. And then I think the last stop of the day, I asked this woman if she had any games. And she's like, oh, someone already bought all the consoles, but the, this DS is still here. So I looked at the DS and there's three GBA loose games with it. And uh, they were Pokemon Ruby, Pokemon Leaf Green, and Pokemon Rescue Some I don't know what it is. Rescue Rangers or something? I don't know what it is. I'm like, well, I'll take these three games. How much you want for that? She said, I don't know, a dollar each? Done. Burp, burp. Burp. And that's it. So whoever bought all the consoles for some reason missed these gems. I thought was strange and uh, that was it for my day so what are you planning on doing with all these I'm keeping the doom I need that one um that's that's my conundrum the super smash bros melee now that it's complete it's an easy sell for some good bucks but I don't have it in the collection but I don't know if I'd really play it I just can't get into those smash games but maybe the kids would at some point and will I ever come across it again that cheap? So should I keep it or should I sell it and make a quick buck? I don't know. I'd not hang on to it. You would? I would personally hang on to it, yeah. Now, I'm going to be a seller at a game swap, so I have the opportunity to sell it for top dollar. The thing is, uh, in my opinion, uh, Super Smash Brothers sells itself, whether you're, at a, whether you're doing it on Kijiji or whether you're at a game show. Game show, you just have more like-minded people. Mm -hmm. But to me, that sells itself on Kijiji. If the first guy doesn't want it, there'll be a bunch more people that will take it. I don't know what kind of money you're looking for for it, but I would sell all your junk at the, at the, mm -hmm. the show, in my opinion. Yeah. All the stuff you bought for a dollar or 50 cents, your doubles. Yeah, for sure, that's gone. I just really got to think of this Mario Party 4. I'm probably not going to play that, but it could be worth a good buck. But maybe the kids will play it at some point. I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Like, I probably would never play Mario Party 4. I would buy it and keep it in my collection for five bucks or two bucks or whatever you paid. That's two bucks. Thing, yeah, sure. I, I, just... I personally would keep it, but I know you tend to sell a lot more than I do. So, in your case, that would pay for your entire haul mm -hmm. and some. Right? You, you'd have a little extra money left over. Like, Mario Party 4, I'm not sure what disc versions of that go for, but I mean, certainly the Super Nintendo versions go for a lot. Yeah, that one's still a good one, I think, for is worth, I don't know. Between well, you're humming and hawing about it, so it sort of insinuates that you, you're you not crazy about this game. You're, just, you're keeping it just because it's a, one of those popular games that people want to have. Yeah, that little stature piece in your collection. Why have a collection if you don't have standouts? You have a collection because you of what you have is, or is stuff that you like and you actually want to play. Can we go through your collection? I'm going through my collection myself <laughs> to do that. I don't need you. <laughs> yeah, maybe you do. On that note, I'll buy your extra PSP games then, since you're so getting rid of stuff you don't play. Why don't you just, if you're thinking about, if you're humming or hawing about it, put it up for sale for what it's going for. If it sells, fine. Well, that's a good idea. Ask mm -hmm. for stupid money. No, no, just ask for full price. If it sells, sell it. But what's, what's, it. what's full price for disc only? Because I'd keep that Zelda case. Obviously, like what's what's just the disc going for? For what? Uh, for Smash? It's like up to sixty bucks. I've seen it uh, sold on eBay for sixty Canadian. Hmm. You could try your luck with eBay and sell it for U.S. currency, and then you're already getting an extra bump of twenty five percent. Plus, if you happen to be a seller that makes a few bucks on shipping, yeah. I don't know. That's what I got to think of. But I do have this opportunity to sell at the show, which is the easiest way to do it. For sure. Quick question for you. Doom 64, do you need the expansion pack for that or whatever you call it? You know, there's yeah. a chunk where you, yeah. you need that to play, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Donkey Kong 64. Yep. You need it for Perfect Dark, I think. Do you? Uh, I'm pretty sure. You need it for that. Uh, there's I, Majora's Mask, I think you need it for. You do? I'm yeah. not sure about Doom. But it would definitely play better. Though. Yeah. Not sure. Do you have it? 
the expansion. The yeah. Yeah. Well, fantastic uh, haul, if you ask me. And uh, really no thrifting because it's so hard to go into Valley Village or something now and see their prices and go, there's a chance I'm going to get this for a dollar. Yeah. Why pay Valley Village? I've been a little bit spoiled with some success at garage sales, but I was saying to Joe recently, I almost feel like Value Village and thrift shops are kind of for suckers right now. Now ask me again in the winter when you can't head out on a Saturday or Sunday morning and get some of the mm. stuff for a buck or five bucks or whatever. My attitude might be different, but uh, right now I just, I mean, I still check it out, but I just feel like Value Village is a little bit, I don't know, like they're pushing the envelopes too, with uh, pushing the envelope with pricing as well. Yeah, and they've raised it. Everything's money. going up. There's the usual Mario tax and Zelda tax, mm -hmm. but even just nothing titles, I find they're bumped up two bucks a title. Yeah. And no, we have a mine now has a flat rate on PS3 or 360 that generation. It now it seems to be 7.99 whether it's the most common two dollar game or not. 7.99. Our uh, value village was trying to sell. Now, mind you, they're popular to some extent for people that grew up in the era. But, you know, like the NHL, anywhere from 93 to 98, let's say, for Genesis. Or, you know, uh, Super Nintendo. A lot of people like them, have some great memories, but they're not pricey games. No way. They were selling those for 20 bucks each, weren't they? Yeah, and someone ended it's, up picking them up, somebody too. Somebody bought them. Loose? Or, well, no, they had boxes. Oh, boxes. But still $20? All right, Em, how about yourself? Uh, well, as far as what's new with me, um, I was going to uh, put out a picture on Instagram. I just haven't done it yet. But uh, yesterday, my two full-size Billy bookcases arrived at the uh, Ikea. Mm -hmm. So uh, they just fit in my car and I brought them home. So uh, so these are the ones you're saying you're going to use for your basement, right? Yeah, the basement. Um, my office upstairs has turned into the Transformers room. In fact, there's no desk in there anymore. Uh when I work from home, I have to work somewhere else in the house. So that's all Transformers, and the basement is going to turn into my video game collection area and maybe a bit of overflow from the Transformers area. But the nice thing is uh, my wife doesn't care what I put down there. So, I mean, I can start with two shelves and just see where it goes. But I don't want to get into sort of hoarding and stuff like that. There's a fine line with the collecting. But uh, I'm pretty excited to have the two bookcases. Uh, it means I can get some stuff out of bankers' boxes mm -hmm. and stacks in my Transformers room, sort of waiting for a home. Right. So um, that'll be exciting just to get the Transformers room back to kind of a display room. I had it the way I wanted for a couple of weeks, and then the video game stuff started taking over. So it'll give me a place to put that stuff. So I'm forgetting. I know I've done Billy bookcases uh, a couple times. I'm just forgetting. We'll just say, Joe, uh, they're about, what, 45 minutes each to put together? No more than an hour. If you want to do them right. No, I'll really, I think you'll probably do about half an hour. Once you get that first one done, it just sort of stays with you, right? Yeah. So. Have you put this stuff together, Bill? Yeah. You've done uh, Billy's, or you said you've got the equivalent uh, mm -hmm. model yeah. from, from somewhere else. Yeah, but I've done Ikea stuff before, too. I like, I have the bit for my drill, too, so I don't mess around with the, with the Allen, Allen keys. key. Yeah. yeah. I think they've done away with the Allen keys, haven't they? Yeah, now there it's um, it's that one little piece that you turn with the screwdriver as the locking, and then yeah, there's like no more Allen keys, oh. at least for the Billies anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's just a standard uh, screwdriver now, right, to turn that bit, the locking bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really they're finding ways, if you can believe it, to somehow cheap out on IKEA building quality. Uh, if, if it was even possible, you know? Yeah. So it's still the post going into one of those, like, uh, steel yeah. things. And, and they tighten that thing. They've in. skimped out on the shelves in terms of um, uh, the four supports that hold them up. Yeah. And something else, too. I can't remember what, but. I mean, i got to say, when you can swing, when you put them together, finally, they're pretty solid. Like, for, for, for what they are. They're better than the gist ones. Yeah. I can confirm that. Yeah. And I mean, in carrying them from uh, the car to my house and all that, I mean, there's a bit of weight to them. You know, like they're not super light and flimsy. So anyway, I've got those. It's just a matter of putting the time aside to set them up. Um, I've spotted some Transformers, but I'll get into that kind of in the wild. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, I'll go through my pickups quickly. Actually, starting with the Transformers one, 
I actually brought mine over here. I'm going to pass them to these guys one at a time here. So I, I didn't wash my one. hands. I know the show rules. I haven't washed my hands. You didn't have them sterilize his hands? <laughs> no, no. But I've been rubbing the velvet pretty hard. Ah. So. so here's the first pickup. Joe, you like to do the narration. It's actually a nice box. It's uh, It's got a bit of weight to it, too. There's die cast in this uh, particular this figure. This or? What? You're I'm, gonna, I'm no. in control. You're Don't worry about me. It's a masterpiece M... MPM-3 Bumblebee uh, Masterpiece Movie Series. And this is a Takara Tomy version. It's sponsored by Chevy. So yeah, it's uh, obviously Bumblebee as his uh, Chevrolet Camaro form, as you would see in the movies. Ten years. So how long the movies have been out? Yeah, the first one was 2007. This is the 10-year uh, anniversary of the line. And from anything I've seen on, with, uh, by the way, the YouTube reviews, they're saying this is sort of a definitive movie Bumblebee. Now, I mean, I don't have a lot of, and historically, I haven't had a lot of love for the movie line. I've softened a lot in recent years with it. I'm actually going to probably watch them again since I've picked up a few of them on either Blu-ray or DVD. But I just thought for this... I saw in the wild, I had a $20 off certificate, so I thought, why not? It's actually, the packaging, I'm um, actually quite impressed with it. Yeah. Um, sorry, where did you buy it from? Toys R Us. Toys R Us. Did they have a lot in stock? No, I am i don't know if this is uh, what region we're talking here, but guys on the forums were saying that uh, at least certain regions were, rest were restricted to four per store. So those are really low numbers, obviously, mm -hmm. for something like this. Um, and as you know, the Transformers fans are ravenous when it comes to anything like this. Um, well, I'm surprised that there's actually die cast. There is die cast in the legs, I believe, and that's what's giving the box that weight. Because I've got some other bigger boxes at home that are sort of feather light. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so obviously you're not going to open this? I'm probably going to open it. Um, my position has softened a little bit on that as well. I'm probably going to open up some of my figures too when I get these new shelves set up and enjoy a few of them. Uh, because I don't have room, I probably never will to display everything. Uh, I'm not going to start opening everything up willy-nilly, but this is one where I sort of picked it up because it's a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not invested in the movie line. This is kind of a one-off for me. Um, I don't even know if I'll get the Optimus Prime masterpiece when it comes out. I was going to go um, next. Do you think how how far do you think they're going to take it masterpiece wise with the movie figures? I I think it really depends on how these two figures sell. Uh, this this it, Bumblebee seems to be doing quite well, and I know there's a lot of anticipation for the um, for the Optimus Prime. I don't believe that's hit yet, at least not in Canada. Now, Bill, you've picked up the odd masterpiece figure in the past. I know you've got masterpiece Soundwave mm -hmm. at Joe's suggestion. You were I guess you found it in the wild and packed it up. The version with the five cassettes. Yeah, it was on sale. It was a Toys R Us sale, online yeah. sale. That we both. I think we both got one, yeah, didn't we? Yep. Uh, I'm surprised you both found one in the wild. Because I, uh, I'm trying to think. I think I eventually did find one, actually. But uh, This guy really looks like the bumblebee I have that I just have loose. I, I know it's not Masterpiece, but it's the same. It, it's very much the same. The one I have has the little... Uh, Dick McWiki character too. The what? The Dick McWiki. And he puts Spike? in his hand. Yeah, the what's his face? Oh. Toby Maguire. What? What? Yes, yeah, Spike. What's his name? You know, the actor. Oh, uh, yeah. Not Toby Maguire. Uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. That I found uh, in the baggies at Value Village. It, but it was really a solid figure. Of course, not to the masterpiece level of things, but it really does remind me of it. Now, you opened up your sound wave. Yeah. Uh, and I know that because um, the picture that we use for Transformers and Beer is actually a photo that was taken by Bill a long time ago. That's right. I get... Uh, With the macro lens, right? That licensing check. I gave you $5. I <laughs> bought that picture off of you for 5 bucks. No, no. It's supposed to keep coming. Residuals, I think they call it. 
Not if I buy it off you. No, it, we didn't work out that kind of license. Well, we did. It was a verbal agreement. <laughs> what if you gave him a fraction of our YouTube profits? We know how much that's earned us <laughs> in two and a half years. Um, is this uh, is this something you consider buying, Bill, or no interest? Because it's the movie line and it doesn't strike that nostalgic chord with you? Well, first off, how, how much is it going for? It's going for 130 plus tax. Uh, I got it for 20 bucks off. There's a online coupon you can use and they're really funny about it too because uh, I don't have a printer at home and I didn't want to print it off at work so I went in and I said to them listen do you happen to have the flyer with this coupon in it and they said no no we don't I said okay well listen no problem <laughs> let me just pull it up on my phone and you can scan the barcode oh we can't do that no 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 we need a piece of paper and I said mm, I don't know I'm able to pull it up on my phone and the, you know the barcode is coming nice and big I think you could just scan that no no, we need it. The head office won't reimburse us for the coupon. We need the coupon. But okay, I mean, can you maybe print a copy for me or take one of the many other ones somebody's brought in and just scan that? No, we can't do that. And then finally somebody else came over and they said, all right, sir, this one time will do it so you can buy your toy. <laughs> <laughs> Very condescending of them. So you can buy your little toy, but next time we're going to have to insist on a paper copy for our audit. I said, all right, okay, I've learned my lesson. So they scanned my phone. They were able to scan the phone, no problem. Yeah. So. Yeah, but yeah, when they're counting the cash at the end of the day, I can see them still needing a coupon to yeah. make everything match up. If that's their situation, other stores are they're ready to go with the digital stuff. Yeah. Like Michaels, they'll take digital coupons. I just think the why have the barcode then online as something you can pull up and. Uh, and actually scan if they're not going to accept it. But I mean, I see the point. I mean, maybe some stores are like that, or you know how it is with um, mid management in some of these WalMarts and stuff where they don't really have any authority to do anything. Everybody's a manager of something. Like Walmart, they're notorious for we're not going to give you a raise, but you'll be the manager of uh, assistant manager of Tupperware. That's your new title, you know, assistant manager of uh, boys' clothing. Yeah, man. I, I wish I could relate the story my sister told me that her husband went through at the cash register at Canadian Tire trying to work a coupon deal or something. There was a sign on the shelf that said you were entitled to this much Canadian Tire money and uh, they had an argument at the cash and he's not one to back down. Should almost have her or him, both of them on the show to tell that. The story goes on for about 40 minutes. <laughs> it went through many layers of management before it was resolved because they just backed their heels in even though they were wrong and he had a sign right here to say look that's what the sign says it's right here anyways people are serious about that canadian tire money too like that's cash people are people aren't messing around with it that. got he it not like they're hurting for canadian tire money but it became a principal thing yeah and so he wasn't going to back down until they assured him he was right <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing with a lot of these places. I would think Toys R Us included. The manager or assistant manager is coming over, but these, these a lot of the times they're kids. You know, mm -hmm. and they come over to some, whoever the acting assistant manager is who's 20 years old, you know, and has no authority to do anything. So, well, anyway. but, but back to the question, would I get this at that price range? No way for sure. And this uh, style of uh, Chevy never appealed to me anyway, so yeah. I, I'm not even on board that way. And it's with the movies, although maybe uh, at some point we can talk. I've actually watched two of the Transformers movies within the last week. Nice. And uh, yeah, there's stuff to talk about there. Yeah, the funny thing, I, I actually like the Camaro. Uh, if anything, historically, what hasn't appealed to me is the look of the robots, which seems, which seems counterintuitive to me even buying this in the first place. But I've heard so many great things about it. And um, even the look of Bumblebee has kind of grown on me over the years. I mean, he hasn't changed a whole lot in the last 10 years from a movie perspective. So to get what they're calling the best version, at least right now. Yeah, I like this version of the robot for sure. You have the doors out the back and uh, it's yeah. got the helmet that can go over the eyes and all that jazz. I yeah. wonder if they're going to release another version of this somehow when Bumblebee does his own standalone movie. Uh, like another masterpiece? Yeah. Bumblebee or like a retool or repaint of this? Uh, well, knowing Hasbro and Takara will probably end up being a retool, right? Yeah. Or just a repaint somehow or both. But or will that make this one a bit more valuable since it's sort of the original masterpiece? Well, thinking out loud here, I mean, 
historically with Takara and Hasbro, they want to maximize their profits with each mold. And uh, I don't know what else you could do with this unless they did that. Uh, I don't know which movie they did it for, or even if it was in a movie, but do you remember seeing toys where the colors were reversed? I don't know if it was like evil Bumblebee or what it was supposed to be, but it was black where it's yellow and yellow where it's black. It was yeah, a black car with yellow stripes. That's what mine is. It's a black car. Was that from one with, of the early movies that I'm just forgetting about? Or is that, no, no, is that not, just a, for that a toy? No, no, that wasn't from the movie. Not even briefly. That's just a toy thing to cash in on the mold. So I could see them doing maybe something like that, but I can't imagine them leaving this alone. And if they did, then maybe this would be worth a little bit of money. Or depending what version... Or how much the uh, the actual Camaro mold changes from from this movie to uh, this movie being what the last night to whatever this new Bumblebee movie is going to be, right? What Bumblebee movie are you talking about? Yeah, there, there's a Bumblebee Come on. solo uh, no way project. Does yeah. he still have vocal problems? I hope not. That was one thing I didn't like about the movies. Like, yeah, why can't Bumblebee speak? That's ridiculous. Like the radio thing got a bit old immediately. Yes. I can't argue there. You can't voice an opinion on this. You didn't, <laughs> well, you didn't even know they were doing a Bumblebee movie. Well, I would block it from <laughs> my brain if I heard it. That's ridiculous. So move on to my next uh, pickup. Uh, this is game related. Reach into my bag here. This one here will look familiar to one of you. Just put that on the table there. Yeah, I was just playing this. I remember you were talking about that. Uh, so this is, uh, for the GameCube, this is the Simpsons Hit and Run game, which is basically a Simpsons, what would this be, like GTA 4-ish? Well, I mean, the graphics, I don't think would be, well, they're Simpsons graphics, so whatever. But uh, you had actually said, Bill, and I'm forgetting if it was in STC Pod or if it was on the Start to Continue YouTube channel, which everybody should check out, by the way. Uh, YouTube channel is Start to Continue, right, Bill? Yeah. That's and the, the podcast channel. is STC Pod. Um, you said on one of them that you were playing it. I think you were just going to, you would clean and you were just testing your games and you would actually play this for a couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got into it. It was fun. Yeah. All the voices are great. The little quips are good. The, uh, the way it's structured, the missions just automatically make you keep going. And it's the proper voice actors from anything I've heard. I've seen a review or two on this. Yeah. Proper voice actors, and I think it was the writers. It's everything really uh, aligned properly to make this a fantastic mm -hmm. game. And from what I hear, it's basically the, the Simpsons GTA. Uh, there was another game, that, another Simpsons game. I don't know if either of you have it. It might be called Road Rage or something. It's actually, it's almost yeah. like Crazy Taxi. Right, yeah. And I heard that, uh, I think I heard that, is it Sega that makes Crazy Taxi? Whoever the company was, I think either sued them or threatened to sue them because it was so similar. Hmm. Crazy Taxi. A little, little known fact there. Little known fact for you gamers. That might is, be is that true or do we ask Siri? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Siri's pretty unreliable to be honest. We could ask Google <laughs> if you want, but uh, I'm actually embarrassed about the Siri thing. I can't even get mine to work. <laughs> I, I was trying to speak into mine the other day and it just she, she didn't acknowledge me uh -huh. at all. Who made the video game Crazy Taxi? Okay, give me a moment. Here is what I found. And yeah, she's gonna make you read it. Yeah, good one. Who'd you ask? Sega. Sega. Yep, Sega Shanghai. So you're not gonna give me that one? Is this the uh, Star Trek uh, trivia? Uh, oh, no, I'll give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they had actually sued them or threatened to sue them because it was so similar to Crazy Taxi. It was a little known fact for any gamers. I'm going to reach back into my bag here. And what I want to show first here, I might as well show the software. All right. So I don't know if either of you have this or have played it. Hmm. You know, it's funny. Oh, wow. Look at this. So this is, uh, Joe, you want to... Uh, this imagine. is the, depending on who you talk to, even though the, the front of the cover says bestseller, uh, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the <coughs> Nintendo GameCube and compatible with the DK Bongos, which you just pulled out of your bag as well. 
Um, I've got my bongos on display right now in front of everybody. On the velvet. On the velvet. Bear bongos <laughs> on the velvet. The uh, skin is very, it's very, very supple. Yeah. It's very soft. <laughs> what I will say too is I went full bill styles here. I didn't, I didn't clean these up. So <laughs> these smudges are not for my fingers on the bongos. Mm. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, tend to do that. Like, my, uh, like you, Bill, I like to keep it. This is how I got it. Yeah. I'm going to clean these up myself with a little whatever it is, rubbing alcohol or whatever I'm going to use to get rid of the grime. But um, I don't know. This looks like a lot of fun. Have either of you played this? I, like I was going to say, it, it's funny. I, I used to see these so much in the thrift stores, the, the bongos. Uh, they'd be piled up there. And I always passed them off saying, oh, you know, one day I'll get around to getting it maybe. And then they disappeared. They were gone. And then I watched a uh, Girlfriend Versus video with my friend, Curtis. He's not your friend. He's my friend. No, he was my friend. And uh, he was teaching a girlfriend, Layla, how to uh, play this game. Was it this game or was there, was there another game? The Bongos? Donkey Kong. Yeah, Conga. Co oh, right. Maybe that's what they were playing. It yeah. had different party games in it. That one's a little bit different. This one is kind of a platformer, I think, whereas that Congo one is more of a, it's a different rhythm-based game, I think. It's a, it's a different, I don't think it's a, this is a bit different. You've got to navigate around and i think one of these is left and one of them's right and then you hit both to jump mm. something like that so was, this is almost like the early days before the wii when it wasn't motion but you it yeah. looked like a lot of fun when they were doing it and it, it, yeah i always thought this would be ridiculous but when they were playing it it looked pretty intuitive i do find it a little bit ridiculous but the novelty i thought uh, this is the only time i've ever seen these in the wild i see them on ebay for various prices um, I just thought it looked like a lot of fun. It was cheap. I had a 30% off. I would have never bought this um, for full pop, but it was, like I said, I got all of these these two games and the bongos for a pretty decent price. Do we and say I, what the decent price is? Uh, I think I paid for everything. Uh, and again, this is thrift store. And again, thrift stores are for suckers. Uh, and I just bought this from the thrift store. So I think I paid with tax and everything 20 bucks. Oh, that's great. For both these games and the... Both of the games and the bongos. Yeah, that's totally cool, man. One. Where are you getting your 30% off cards from? How are you managing that? I've From purchases, obviously, when you uh, when you rack up enough of them, you'll get your... I guess right. it's 100 bucks spent. You okay. get 30% off. Yep. Uh, so they got me in the system, of course, as M. Uh, somebody else has ripped off my phone number. I made up a phone number, a really easy one. And there's some, somebody else in the system named Liz... And the funny thing is, so they've used the same fake number as me. And a couple times they're like tapping Liz. I'm like, well, wait a second here. There's a name right under there, M. That would be me. Like, if you look at the two names, why would you assume it's the top one? <laughs> you know, well, Liz. Yeah, okay. So anyways. Um, so you don't do the donation thing? I've started again? doing the donations. I bought these with a donation card. Oh, good. Uh, but I haven't experienced uh, what you've experienced. I've only done it twice. I try to do a little power of suggestion because what I do is I, I show up with my trunk full of goodies and I say to the guy, you know, hey, you better bring up the bin here. We got a full load in the, in the trunk here. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll help him put the stuff in a little dolly. And then I'll say, yeah, do you want to grab me one of those 30% off coupons when you, when you go inside? I'll just meet you at the door. Mm -hmm. And no one's ever argued about right. it. Right. So I don't know if it's that I've given enough stuff or I've put the, thought in his head that look this is really a 30 percent load here but i know you've experienced where they want to shortchange you you're giving free stuff that they're going to turn around and sell it to suckers and they're giving you what 15 20 percent yeah whatever like it should be we save you the tax on that sir on your next purchase this customer had it in his mind he's going to load this stuff up he's going to drive it to us he's going to hand it to us i don't care how much he gives we're giving him whatever 30 percent I, I don't see the argument they're not ever going to lose on that well, you're, gonna, you're just going to have spending more in the store anyway if you got a 30 percent off yeah, card they're not going to lose they're not going to lose well they can't lose if they give you fucking five percent because everything they're selling is free well they're losing at the five percent because they're pissing me off well, yeah they're losing somebody like bill might say well fine i'm not going to donate anything else so you're sort of biting no i just mean in terms of the fact that you're still using a five percent card when you're buying something I understand. But if they give me 30%, it just solidifies the uh, yeah, customer you'll, base. Yeah, you'll return more and give them more. 
why would you donate if they're going to hunk you off when you pull up? Like you said, you've spent your time, you've spent gas, you've given your goods. Yeah. I mean, why is there a 5%? Like, what do you get for 5%? Is that like, oh, here's a couple of magazines. I donated uh, four board games and they gave me 10%. That's low. I think that's low. Uh, I wasn't expecting anything more, really. Oh, well, I was hoping they, for 15 What do they sell games for, though? Six bucks each or something? Uh, Five bucks? Four ninety nine usually. Why did you have all those board games? Uh, it's just cleaning shop. So you bought them and then donated them again? Yeah. What? No, they're old, old, or what? old board games that I've had. That you bought there. No, oh, that I've had in the basement too, in cleaning shop. Why are you moving around so much in your chair? I got a fidget, I got the Jimmy legs going on. <laughs> okay. And you're too, you're like a foot away from me. I don't like being this close to your face. <laughs> it's freaking me out. <laughs> Look at this big spike of audio. You're, your you're laugh. freaking out, man. That's your laugh, your cackle. It's a treat for me to see this STC moment play out in person. <laughs> For two and a half years, I thought maybe I'll get that call. <laughs> this is the this is the call. Like the phone would ring at home on the landline to pick up. Hello, hello. Now you know, sir, can we clean your ducts? <laughs> I was waiting for the call. I never came. And then tonight, mm -hmm. I see this play out before me. Fantastic. Yeah. So anyway, that's it for my pickups. Oh, um, it's good stuff. Not is bad. there instructions in here too? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you can check the disc condition too. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be too bad. I generally don't buy them if uh, to steal an STC term if they're roached. Uh, I can tolerate. I used to want like brand new mint looking, but I know it's it's tough, especially if you're at a garage sale. What am I going to do? They want two bucks a title, and I'm going to kick up a fuss about a couple of scratches or whatever. So uh, depending on where I'm buying the stuff from, uh, I'm, I'm a little more lenient. And you know, depending on what I'm paying for the stuff. According to Bill, everything can be scuffed out. So I, the thing is, though, I, I don't you have to right. pay for the buffing? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I'm saying minor scratches are nothing. <clears throat> to quote NJ uh, Retro, I think the most systems will play it with normal minor scratching. The one, the games I was testing, uh, the GameCube games it, from the show, you heard me. They were from a yard sale, super loose from a kid, and they were like SOS pads on the bottom, but they all played fine. I've never uh, had a game, mind you, I don't have any that are really scratched, but I've never heard of a game not reading. Unless you've got a chip, you know what I mean, where it's, it actually goes right down, uh, what is it, the top side is where the recorded material is, right? Mm -hmm. So if something's chipped it on that side, and it's taken it right out or gone right down, then you can have problems, but... Yeah. I've had Wii games. I think Wii is a little bit um, more fragile. Yeah, I have uh, Mario Galaxy that won't go past a certain level. And it has a scratch that your fingernail will kind of get caught in. So. so it's not even a laser issue. It's literally the scratch is big enough that... Yeah. So that's it for my pickups. Uh, a couple things real quick, Transformers related. Again, I was, uh, I was out and about, and I didn't buy this. Uh, and I don't want to misquote what I saw here, so I'm going to pull up my Instagram accounts and just double-check the picture that I posted a couple days ago on the Transformers and Beer Instagram. Uh, $229. I'll show you guys this picture here. So I saw this, I believe, on Sunday uh, in the wild. This was at Toys R Us. Again, this is a different location. This is the Pickering location. Uh, and if you're not, uh, Joe, you'll know what this is right away. Bill, you may not be familiar with this, but this is a reissue of MP10, which is the, uh, it was the more recent masterpiece version of Optimus Prime. Now, this is the more G1-inspired Optimus Prime. This isn't any sort of movie-verse Optimus Prime. It's a fantastic figure. It's been around a long time now. When this first came out, I'm forgetting what Takara told me was charging for theirs but to give you an idea Joe bought his he found his at Toys R Us mind you he got it on sale and that was what he paid 50 hmm. but it was it was uh, $99 to start right I wasn't fortunate enough to find one in the wild at that price point so I had to pay the scalper prices but even those scalper prices a few years ago was significantly lower than 229 plus tax like this price point is high enough where I, I can't even imagine scalpers buying these and trying to flip them like you're, you're already at the ceiling here 
Like, like how much more are you going to get? Like, what's 229? What's 230 plus tax approximately? If you were to guess. Like 260? Too much. It's not worth the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Yeah. Like at that point, what is it? What is a reseller going to have to sell these for to make a couple of bucks? 300? So well, obviously a pass for me, and it, it doesn't help that I'm, I'm a fairly particular collector, and I don't like how these mm. security bands dig into the yeah, four ridiculous. sides of the boxes. And I remember there was something I was buying once, and I picked the best box they had on the shelf. And when I brought it up to the guy, instead of carefully grabbing it by the edge of the box, he grabbed the dongle in the middle and started hauling the box around. So it had the weight of the box as he's swinging it around to get the little thing to release the uh, security device. He's knocking the box around, not caring. It might have been that year of the horse or goat or whatever it was, Optimus Prime. Same mold, but just a different color. What do you think the Triplicon is going to go for if this is 229 I think it's actually going for about the same. I forget. In Canadian, I think it's going for about 230 oh, that's surprising. That's what... Uh, Fort Max went for. Now, if you saw the Triptychon for two twenty nine, would you grab it? I might grab it uh, and keep an eye on the prices. I sometimes I buy stuff at full price because Toys R Us has a sale every two weeks, so I would either get it for twenty five percent off or forty percent off. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it didn't drop in price, I would return it and buy it back again. I keep waiting for it to, to drop. So I, I don't like to pay full price for stuff like that. Not, not at this price point. When you see something like that on the shelf, can you typically see that up in the rafters as well, un, unfettered by the wires? You know how they have so, the yeah. overstock up there? No. Uh, usually, it depends on the location, but sometimes they have a display case behind the counter, and that's normally, at least in the Toys R Us that Joe and I might go to. You don't see as much of this, this stuff. Sometimes they have uh, sensors, you know, when you walk through. Well, I guess they would still have to have the, uh, the dongle on it. Uh, in the one close to Joe and me, they've got a display case, and that's where you'd see the higher-end figures. That's mm -hmm. where, where my Bumblebee was. That makes sense. It was in a display case. There was like no the, dongle. Aside from, dongle. like, a, a video game system, I'm trying to think of what else at a Toys R Us store would be selling for at this price point. Like, uh, aside from maybe, like, a really massive Lego set right which can sometimes run two three hundred bucks right i think the reality is is that nobody's nobody's going to be able to walk out of the store with with this uh, masterpiece optimus prime under their shirt they won't be able to walk out with a uh, game system either if anything i think the easy prey would be uh software like if they and they don't but if they had just the uh, disc-based games out, those are 80 bucks a pop you know, on day one. So I could see people shoving those down their jacket sleeve in the winter. And what do you think like people that. are going to take from this, this set? Like, it's aside I, from Optimus by himself, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if they're worried people are going to open up and take parts. Uh, like, I heard when Fort Max came out, sometimes people, I don't know if they were doing it in the store or buying it and returning it, but they would take the heads and then return the figure. Either return the figure or if they open it in the store. Well, you know what I mean? You would buy it then yourself, and it would be missing the, uh, the head. Hmm. Which really sucks for a guy like you that doesn't open your figures, because it means if you ever got around to it, you're going to open it up, and you know, several years later, no Cerebros. It's the rare one. It's the rare headless. No head for you. <laughs> Never is. <laughs> it um, is ridiculous to ask that kind of money and then destroy the box. Yeah, they have no. As a toy store, they should have a concept of what where all the value should, is in a unit. If they were smart, they would actually specialize in that kind of advertising. Like say, you know, somehow appeal to the the toy collectors out there, saying we're the store you want to come to. All of our items are are meant or buy from us online. We won't ship it to you all jacked up like we did to uh, Joe one time with the sound wave. You hear about that, Bill? Well, it happened to me, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, the same, like it was your sound wave as well? Yeah, it got banged around in the box pretty, not to his, Joe's as bad as his. Joe's actually looked like somebody sat on the box. Like you could see cheek prints yeah. on the box. Yeah. But in hindsight, it played out positively for me because it was, actually I opened it up 
if they had, if the box had been pretty mint, I I probably would have been hard pressed to open up my third sound wave. Yeah, I think the greater question, if we dive into it, is when you picked your thing, your original MP, whatever, Dewey. Well, the Optimus, Optimus yeah. for fifty dollars. Why didn't you pick up another one for M and another one because for me? Because this was after. Why did you keep it on the down the low? This this was because it it had. I found mine after mm. it had been on He's on moving. the shelves for a long time. He's moving in his chair Bill, again. Bill asks the questions that everybody everybody wants the answers to, He's and you couldn't find them anywhere. And we M and I had both given up on finding one at Toys R Us. And then I just happened to be there one day, walking through the transform aisle and nothing again. And then something made me do a double take on the bottom shelf and tucked away in the far back corner on the bottom shelf behind a whole bunch of figures was this clear box. And that being the Optimus Prime. So somebody had hidden it in the store, right? Yep. Probably a, yeah, I, one of the, the shelf people, shelf stalkers there. <laughs> the shelf people. <laughs> Whatever is convenient to my story at this moment. And then I had like a, it was a sale, and then I had like a coupon and a gift certificate. So, like I said, 50 bucks. Yeah, see, I almost went down this road with you guys back then, because I think the next thing after Soundwave, I wanted to get uh, Thundercracker. And uh, I was going in and out of Toys R Us's constantly trying to find that one and it never showed up luckily and that ended my yeah well that's what we were doing for the the optimus prime like literally what twice a day we'd go to both of us yeah would hit up toys r us's i got lucky once and i ended up finding a couple of masterpiece bumblebees obviously not the movie one but the volkswagen version and i remember uh they had a couple of them i didn't know you might have been in the market for it but uh and i had no way of contacting you back then but i actually to your point, I had actually, when the shoe was on the other foot, had hooked Joe up with the Masterpiece Bumblebee. We've so all, I'm still waiting for that reciprocity. We've all hooked Joe up with stuff, right? You know, like for me, it's the Bumblebee. For you, it's the NES Classic. Well, I think we're seeing how things work now that we're together, right? Yeah. The reason for the hookups is because... It's interesting. Um, well, one, I've got two kids. <laughs> so I'm not... I don't have the availability like you guys do. And I'm just not out as often, too. So why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Now, before we, we get right off the topic of um, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, I do have one question from uh, Instagram that I'll run by both of you guys. This is from M. I'm going to pronounce this wrong. <laughs> M-R-O-O-H-R. Anyways, I, I hate to say it, but after handling MP39, MP10 is starting to feel old. Do you think this reissue is the last hurrah for MP for the MP10 mold? What would you like to see for a new MP Optimus? Bill, we'll start with you. Bill, I'm not sure how familiar you are. If you've seen this one, uh, well, tell him what the one he is he's describing, though. It's the one I just showed you in that picture. In fact, I'll pull it up again just to give you a reference point. Well, Joe, uh, so here's the picture. Um, Can I give the regular Joe answer for him? The TMB Joe answer? Sure. Um, why don't you go ahead and answer that while uh, I ponder this a little bit? <laughs> well, I know, I know. I know exactly what I'd want okay. to see. I'd want to see them go back to what the original Optimus mold was like in terms of... Uh, Make it a real collector's toy and have it more of the uh, the metal, <clears throat> like just more die cast bits. More die cast throughout the figure. Because <clears throat> I will say, and I'm the first one to say that uh, Hasbro and Takara cheap out on their masterpiece right. line with plastic wheels like, and all that. They can't to to the true TF fan. They can't go around changing the cab mold from from this original flat front and trailer to whatever version they decide to make them look like in the movies right so i'd like to see just add some more die cast to it and go back to what the original masterpiece optimus mold would be like and m has that one right i've just pulled up a couple of pictures here um do you mean the original mp1 or are you talking about the g1 
Keep in mind with the MP10, well, no, they have to spend money on rubber wheels. There is yeah. a, a bit of die cast. No, we're talking the uh, the masterpiece ones where it's got like he's got the hydraulics. Oh. And the the, uh, the pistons. He's got uh, heavily die cast. Yeah. For for build. But it's just the figure. It's not the trailer. Which is what MP10 was so great. What made M MP10 so great is it came fully stocked with. Uh, you know the trailer and, and all the accessories, right? Yeah, there there was a version. Well, here's here's what Joe was talking about here. So the the very first masterpiece figure was this masterpiece Optimus Prime. This is MP1, and uh, you can't tell obviously because there's no um, size reference point next to it. But uh, they they reduced the size for the newer line. Starting on MP10, everything was a lot smaller. Now you obviously know why they did that. The uh, like the Walmart version of this was, I think, 60 bucks back in the day. And this, if I uh, ever showed this to you, or I mean, I don't have it out of the box, but if you held the box, it's super heavy. Chunks of die cast. Uh, like Joe said, he's got the hydraulics in a hydraulic suspension. He's got these neat communicators on his arm where they flip up, and you can see he's either talking to Bumblebee, there'll be a little picture of Bumblebee or something. Uh, I mean, it's got its drawbacks. You can see, you know, compared to the new one. I mean, you can see like the joints and you know, the arms and all that. I mean, some people might like that because it's kind of robotic looking, but so no, it's, it's come a long way. No ankle pivots on there. It would have had some. You can see just in the box art here, but it, it would have been fairly limited. That's a deal breaker for me. It's got to have ankle manipulation. Um, to to answer yeah. the uh, how many poses can you do without? The ankles is that what you, pivoting. Is that what you say to the ladies? Yeah, that helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bill makes a good point. I mean, if he's standing there just in the A stance all the time, it's pretty limiting. Like, it's literally just a statue. Um, my only, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about the uh, MP10 mold. Quite honestly, the only thing I can think of is... Um, I didn't realize, you, sorry to interrupt, I didn't realize you came with the Megatron as well. I think most of them have. I think the MP10 didn't, did it? I've never taken my own box. But, uh, he's, uh, it's not displayed. Yeah. So I'm going to say no, it didn't come with the Megatron. The, the only thing I can think of offhand I don't love uh, about the MP10 is that in order, in order to get some shoulder articulation, like really good shoulder articulation for dynamic poses, you've got to basically pull the shoulder right out of the socket. And you can see like the joint, like you're pulling it out. For which one? It. The 10? For MP10. Oh, okay. But I mean, I don't know how they would get around it. But then again, I'm not a toy engineer, so... I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they could come up with something that was a little bit better, but for me, it would just be minor improvements. Um, for instance, MP1, there were side windows on the cab. MP10, there weren't. They were just absent completely, and I think it was just being a bit lazy. Other than that, I mean, I really don't have anything but good things to say about MP10. So, uh, But to answer his question, I do think this is probably the last hurrah as well for MP10. I think they're sort of squeezing the last bit of life out of it. I think there was also a black repaint uh, not too long ago as well. And uh, I think it's a matter of time before we do see an up updated version. So much like we'll no longer see a G1 version of Megatron, um, would this last reissue of MP10 be the final version that we see of? Or will there be, aside from, aside from the Masterpiece line, Will we see regular reissues like of a G1 version as well? Well, what I actually think they're going to do is they're going to come out with another Masterpiece Optimus Prime at some point. Um, Movie version, you mean? Like that no, style? No, like this this same style, but they're going to improve upon it. Take something like Starscream, for example, where they took the same old Starscream mold that had been used since MP, what was it, 5 or 6? They removed the hip kibble and they re-engineered it slightly, or a little bit, uh, made some big improvements to an existing mold, and then marched that out, and then did all the Seekers, you know, with some modification. So I could see them taking even this mold, making some improvements to it, and then trotting it out again. But this is probably the last we'll see of this mold as it stands, in my opinion. So that's it for, like, uh, TFs and stuff I've seen in the wild or I've picked up. Okay, well, maybe for some of our other listeners, we should probably stray away from some of the TF gaming talk. And well, hold on, I had, 
you know, we're doing questions from listeners. I have a uh, question from a listener too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's TF Fan One, and he says he's always been wondering about the history of Joe and M. Where did you two first meet? Are you sure that's what he's wondering about? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. TF Fan, yeah, one. No, I've been talking myself hoarse this episode. So, Joe, I'm going to let you take it away here. I'm going to enjoy my beer here for a little bit. Um, Where'd this all come from? Are we talking grade school? No, first time I met him, I met him through my cousin. And uh, this was when uh, M was living, he was still living at home with his parents because we were obviously younger. In fairness, we were all living at home with our parents. <laughs> well, yeah. Joe spent a lot of time there, though. Yeah, that's okay. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so I was visiting, uh, my cousin and, uh, cousin Chuck? no, we were going out somewhere and we had to, and he had called M up on the phone and said, Hey, do you want to come join us for something? Whatever it was. So we drove to M's house and I was sitting in the back seat for some reason, probably because probably yeah, you were going to sit in the front. So I, I, I gave up the front seat. You came out your door, came down the driveway, reached in the driver's side window. Careful. And started <laughs> squeezing my cousin's uh, uh, man boobs or something like that or making some <laughs> weird funny noises. And then you realized that I was in the back seat. In fairness, he had ample boobage. I had just got out of a short stint <laughs> of jail time. Uh, no, he. I didn't know anybody who was in the car. So when I came out, I thought it was just him. So for joke, I didn't, I wasn't squeezing. There was no squeezing. I was just, I kind of tweaked his. Yeah, you flipped I it. Did, I, I flipped his. You flipped it up. His, Is this where you got this move from? What move? So I got M to blame for this? No. So I think I either poked him or something like that. And then I see Joe poke his head out of the back seat, And I was instantly embarrassed because I thought, I've never met this guy before. And my first, in his first impression of me is that I'm poking this guy's pectoral region, uh, his cousin. But in fairness, uh, Joe was dressed for the times. He had the, uh, the tight stone, stone wash shorts. Remember those? Cut off jean shorts. Stone wash shorts? And he was wearing the sort of the Italian vest. Ah, uh, uh, here we go. What? What are you wearing? Italian vest. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny any of it. No, I didn't have the Italian undershirt on. Did he have uh, the chains in? No chains, but there was the uh, the dock, the hiker style docks. Yes, those were the and construction socks. The eight uh, eight hole docks or six hole I think docks. Six hole. Yeah. What was going on topside here? That uh, Joe had the. Uh, I think I was going for the Italian slick era. back or some nonsense. Ah, slick 50. Something like that. Yeah. So that. That was it. And then after that, I don't know. We just, um, wasn't any awkwardness or anything. So yeah, we just sort of became a trio. Yeah, that was that whole uh, nipple thing and then the stonewash shorts, all that stuff was fine. Um, I, yeah. We were probably. I don't remember out. the stonewash shorts. <laughs> we, were probably, we were probably heading out for wings or food. That was usually what we did. Oh, let's go to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Uh, you heard a story the other day on STC Pod about us oh, joining yeah. having our uh, uh, chicken wing eating contest mm -hmm. and then bringing it all 60 at once and the, uh, the fat congealing. And Joe threw in the towel at one point. And I, I think out of pride, I had to have a couple more. What was the name of that place again? The, uh, it was the Peel Pub. Peel Pub, that's it. Yeah, it was oh, in Toronto. Yeah, I did. Now it's uh, Shoeless Joe's. That location is a Shoeless mm -hmm. Joe's on uh, King Street. Yep. How'd you get Joe down downtown in Toronto? I think we were actually down there for our friend's bachelor party, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't our buddy getting married? And is down the street uh, from there is, is a strip club. No. Um, our other local buddy? Like very local? Really? Like around the corner local? Yeah. He was getting married. And I think we met there to do a little pre-drinking. And then there's a strip club on King Street. I think it's called, I want to say, For Your Eyes Only or something. It's the one that they call the Classy Strip yeah. Club. We're wow. familiar with it. Classy in the sense that... You the, are? I'm not. The, uh, <laughs> the bouncer's wearing a tuxedo. Yeah. Other than that, you're running the mill strip club. Yeah. Nothing special. What is, what is Joe's move in a strip club? 
Jeez, saddle right up to. I'm uh, very particular about who touches me or. Are you going right up to Perv Row? No. Uh, well, I'll do it if we're in a group. If the group is doing it, then Joe wouldn't stand out. But in fairness to Joe, like he he wouldn't be the one suggesting it, and he is pretty particular about germs. Yeah, I don't want stuff like squirting in my eye or stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, like if he came home with pink eye. Even yeah. if he was living at home, that could be a problem. There's a one time I went to my first uh, first time I ever went to a strippers a strip club. What is it called the Million Dollar Saloon? And it Where was, was that? It was uh, in a local city close by. And I, I think there were actually a couple of them. I think there was another one in Toronto once yeah. upon a time, but yeah, the one he's referring to. And was a they were just absolute garbage in there. And this bony one insisted she give me a lap dance, even though I told her no, and then she got upset. So I said, I caved and gave in. And then I went home, and I could still smell the stink on my jeans. So I ended up throwing those ones away. I didn't bother washing them. They just, I was disgusted by it. It's more stone wash going away. At least, I don't know. What did that stone wash look like in that black light? It must have gone. It, was, it wasn't a stone wash. No, but I, I remember you go on the, the black, uh, yeah. the black t-shirts, right? And then you always have like the glow on them from yeah. uh, whatever <laughs> detergent you use in the wash or some nonsense. Yeah, as you would say, it would look like there was a bit of spaghetti on the shirt, <laughs> but it's really just <laughs> laundry. Yeah, shirts. it really is just clean. But yeah, no, Joe's pretty particular about the germ thing. Um, what I will suggest, and again, vision's always twenty twenty in hindsight, but given that they were stonewashed jeans, <laughs> I think I would have probably washed them a bunch of times because they were pretty light already. Like you wouldn't are lose you, I, the color. Are you sure they were stonewashed? I'm pretty sure those were <laughs> You were the stonewashed kid, man. No, I don't think I could afford stone wash because that stuff was expensive. No, that was stylish stuff. Like, if anything, we were the like not you, like me and the other guys were the losers wearing the normal, just blue. Oh, well, that guy's wearing blue jeans. This guy's rocking a stone wash. Yeah, did he have mm. stone wash jean jacket too? Like Jay Leno, everything was stone washed. I did have jacket. one at one point in my life. A stone wash one? I'm pretty sure. And then I had one that was like a faded blue, but I had like a brown collar. I had one of those. I used to want the one with the fur collar, but I never found it. I remember seeing it in a movie when I was a kid, and I never was able to find one. Like, you know, like a picture of Levi's on with the fur. It's funny how those jean jackets have just disappeared. Like Nobody wears a jean it's, jacket. It's now. embarrassing. But I'll tell you something funny. I still have two of those jean jackets in one of my closets. I've still got a black one, and I've got a blue one with a leather collar. Oh, those ones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're Probably. classy. And that one, <laughs> they class it up. They were at the time. Now, the funny thing is, those things fit funny, too. Like, if you put it on now, even though we're bigger, you'd be swimming in it. Like, have you ever tried on an old suit you bought in the 90s? My God, what fit was that? Like, I tried on an old suit of mine. And if anything, I'm heavier now than I was 10 years ago. And I'm hula hooping in this thing. How did I ever wear this suit? Was the 90s the three button? And double breasted, you know, Letterman had these huge double breasted suits. That's what I would call it. Was them. A, yeah. rectangle, with rectangle with arms, right? <clears throat> I need a new jacket. We had double breasted suit. suits for that. Remember that wedding we went to in New Brunswick? Yeah. But I remember both of us <laughs> rocking the double breasted. That was my first suit, like real suit as a young man. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, the 90s had gotten into the stuff like the extremes, like you had the four button. Like we couldn't stop at three. You had the four and then the five button where the lapels were just tiny. Right, yeah. Yeah, it was stylish at the yeah, time. I like we that. laughed down. I like that. But uh, at the time, man, if you were wearing that, you were futuristic. You were GQ, GQ smooth. So uh, what, is there any kind of trouble you guys got into besides that? Did they, were there any close scrapes with the law? You must be thinking of Buddha. And uh, who's the other guy? Gandhi? Gandhi. Is that a Gandhi story? Was there a Buddha? Or did I make that up? No, there's no Buddha. <laughs> uh, Were you involved at all with the Gandhi stuff? No. You no, mean uh, Duda? Duda. No. no Buddha. That was a different. Those were uh, Joe's buddies from school, right? Like from high school? And McDonald's or something? Uh, well, it would have been both. 
High school and McDonald's. I met Joe after he'd written off Gandhi and <laughs> didn't do that. No guys. Mm. Well, what, what but happened? so no brushes with the law. We were a little, uh, I don't want to say a little older, but I mean, we were. Um, no, I just outgrew, outgrew their. Uh, yeah, what happened this with this Duda? This is appropriate for T&B. <laughs> oh, really? You're missing, you're missing out the title. I think they're at the edge of their seat here. You had me go on about my notorious past, and you just sat there and said nothing. When? Now we're finding out there's some real stuff, you and your acid wash jeans. What, when do we talk about your stuff? Don't worry about me. We're talking about you. No, I, mean, I know what you're doing. Too. You're pulling me. You're pulling what I do to you. <laughs> well, what happened? Um, it's pretty. It's got to be famous. M knows about it. Hmm. Here we get. Don't make up stuff now. Well, there was the uh, one time we went camping. We rented sea dews and then we had a head-on collision with each other. So it's sort of uh, started the whole uh, falling apart process. Brilliant. Is that you driving into him? No, I was a passenger on one. Uh, so I got thrown. Who was in front of you? It's funny. If you, who Gandhi. was the driver? So a male driver. Well, there's four guys. You were holding. You were on the back. <laughs> I was riding oh, bitch. No. <laughs> holding on to Gandhi. Well, we were going to take turns driving because there's two CDUs and four guys. Yeah, I go sit at the dock and say, my turn's after you guys are done. Yeah, but rather we than were, hold on. We to had to my pay friend. for the rental, so we want to take full advantage of the time. And you got to really hold on on a sea dew. Your thighs are oh, yeah. clenched. Just you grab mean, onto his life jacket. Now on a motorcycle, though, you would grab the thing behind you, right? Yeah. Oh, that's deadly. That's yeah. hard. You've got to have core strength. That activates the uh, lower back, ab muscles. But Gandhi's like bigger than you, like a big guy. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Jesus oh, no. Christ, eh? You're going to attack me? I'll attack you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, he Fred was, Norris here goes right for it. He was just naturally a huge guy, like, and his dad was even freakishly bigger. Okay, you liked holding on to him. You got behind him. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, so the c do split up, and then we came. They turned and then started heading toward each other, and one guy turned left, or... And trying to evade each other, we they kept turning the same way, like stupidly, and then eventually, next thing I know, I'm flying through the air and landing in water. Nothing happened to Gandhi. Oh, uh, another guy got his eyebrow uh, cut, so he needs some stitches. And then the driver of the other one uh, got his calf split open, and the muscle popped out from underneath the bone. Mm. Oh God! So then we went to the uh, one of the local hillbilly hospitals. And they just wrapped him up, and then they had to send him to another hospital where he got staples up and down his leg, and that was it. Not to make light of it, but you guys must have been a sight for sore eyes. I mean, you've got one guy with a, a cut along his eye. I got a bloody nose, that was it. So, yeah, just the leg guy and, and the eyebrow guy. Like, the leg guy's wild. If the muscle's hanging in? Yeah, it was gross. I remember he was uh, sitting in the water, and he goes, I can't feel my leg. So we had him sit, pull himself up onto the sea dew, and then all of a sudden I've got this calf floating in front of me that's got the muscle popped out oh, um, it's like literally like a, a foot from my face i didn't know what i was looking at <laughs> did you try to like play it cool oh don't worry man this happens all the time uh <laughs> i was just like all right man you'll be fine because if you freak out that's it and then one of the sudos is sinking we had a hail a boat in the lake to come tow us back and then an ambulance took us away and um we ended up paying eight hundred dollars each just to cover the insurance costs for the CDUs. Because they're like two brand new CDUs from <laughs> this resort camping resort that we rented them from. You called the hospital hillbilly. Really, you guys were the hillbillies. I wasn't driving. <laughs> no, <laughs> no the hospital was located in hillbilly country. <laughs> Which is why we got sent to a real hospital to get the procedure done. So you just had a bloody nose. Yeah, I might have had a concussion too, but they didn't know about that stuff back then. Well, man, I'm impressed that you stuck around and everything and helped. Like, I know nowadays anything happens at work, I turn for my backup and I see the door close. And 
There's not nobody <laughs> there. That's what I get nowadays. So I'm impressed that you hung out through the crisis. I suppose you couldn't really swim away, so. No. You were kind of locked in. Well, that was just the start of the whole falling out process and stuff like that. Well, I remember at the time you explained it to me, you seemed really, like you thought they'd been so irresponsible about it, that it was almost like kind of the, the beginning of the end for you. You'd sort of drawn the line in the sand that, you know, maybe they're not really your... Yeah, not really as good of friends as I thought, but uh, yeah, I don't think they were playing chicken. I think it was just one of those weird things where it's like, yeah. you're trying to avoid each other and you keep turning the same way, and the next thing you know, you're like, you know, especially when you're traveling at... So many kilometers, uh, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess in fairness, I mean, we were all kids, too. Or they were. Yeah. Like, we, we were all, what, 18 or 19? Stupid so. kids anyway, too, right? Yeah. Well, you had a good run with Gandhi. Sure. A good run. Well, he wasn't He wasn't my close friend. I knew him through uh, Duda. Oh, Duda was the main deal. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that after all these years. So well, the barn parties in Lindsay... Was, uh, that was with those guys. Yeah, no, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't there for that. But I love the story about that, jumping into the bale of hay. Oh, yeah. Who knew hay wasn't soft? <laughs> well, bales wouldn't be. Well, this is, it's still hay. I didn't know. I'm from the city. Now, Bill, do you actually live on a farm? Or is this all just hijinks and <laughs> yeah, let's smoking shift, mares? <laughs> let's shift yeah, it over to Bill. don't need to go over to me. We're finding out about you guys finally. You know the Bill has two sisters? I never knew that. I only knew about garden gloves. Yeah. Is that right? Garden gloves? Uh, on yeah. Garden. Twitter? I think so. Garden I think gloves. Memory. Something. I have two sisters. It was not a farm. There are farms around. Did you have farm animals? No. Yeah, you did. No. You said you milked cows. <laughs> no, I didn't. You dreamt that up. No, there was no. I like my dream better than the reality. Yeah, maybe. I was there for the camping trip that he told you about in recent episodes, oh, yeah. along with the female bacon. That story. Yeah, I was saved by those guys. Yeah. You saved him when he was in black. I Island. actually was the one that, I wasn't going to do anything physical to Joe, uh, but I reasoned with him, even though he was in kind of a drunken stupor. Uh, uh, I was talking to the other guys. We'd rallied the troops, and we had decided, like, Joe was refusing to leave this other campsite. And these girls were like, this guy's going to get some bacon in the morning. One girl's like, some female bacon. Ah, they were bumping elbows, laughing. And I thought, man. So me and me and the other two guys went aside and said, look, we can't let Joe do this. You know what I mean? Like, who knows what he could pick up? So one guy said, all right, I'm going to drag Joe back to our campsite. And I said, whoa, hang on here. Let me talk to him first. So I went over and I said, listen, Joe, this is your last chance. Uh, you know, maybe you're drunk right now. I don't know, but... They are going to drag you out of this campsite. You know, my suggestion would be get up and just walk back with us. And it was fine. Joe popped up and walked back to the campsite. Even in his drunken stupor, he was rational enough to know, I don't want to get dragged out of here. Because one of the guys was enormous. Uh, one of the guys who was with us. So, like, he could have physically done it. It just wouldn't have been the right thing to do in mixed company like that. But he would have done Is it. That, uh... to, to save you. Out of love. Is that the there. Mazda driver? Yes. The, with the old school alarm. This guy had a, an alarm that uh, when you arm it, they would speak to you. So it would say, arm, <laughs> when you armed it, when you push the button. And then when you turn it off, it would say, disarm, in this distorted voice. For the old Mazda protégés. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's big into the audio, so he had the, uh, the trunk full of, uh, what, 212s? You know, back in the days when you had all the subs in the car. And yeah. It was cool to see how much your car could rattle apart. I'm still wondering if, a, you know, a little bit of bacon would have been okay, though. I think they were... Really, you didn't see these. Yeah, I think they were people. dirt. You didn't see these people. I was fine, though. I just wanted to sit there and just chill. But no, that's what you wanted to do. But those girls had, like, they wanted to rape. an ulterior motive. Like, you've seen Deliverance, right? It would have oh, been something like Deliverance. Oh, it would have been man-raped? Yeah. It would have been that scene, you know, boy, you're going to do some praying for me. Wouldn't have been good. Hmm. Well, he might have come out a little bit more humble from the experience. <laughs> have a different Joe. <laughs> uh, you make me into who I am. Well, anyway, we want to thank TF1, uh, Fan1, is it, for that 
question, at getting to know you It's not TFN-1. It's not? No. What is it? That was just TF fan one. Oh, this is a different... Yeah. Oh, I thought it was that uh, one of our really early listeners who used to leave us questions and comments. All right, well, we kind of forgot about um, doing this earlier on in the show, but uh, since we're running out of time, we have to put this in to appease our TMB fans. As always, M and I uh, have been going through and watching an episode of Beast Wars prior to our record. And... Uh, Bill, you're also with us watching this one, so you can give your, your take on it if you if, yeah. you're, if you even understood what was going on. Well, this is also an STC episode, so Joe's not allowed to read. Well, I have to read what the no. episode is about. Well, you know what it's about. If you know what Team B is about, I read the episode. <laughs> this was uh, episode number 19 of uh, season one, original air date January 7th, 1997. And this one uh, is called uh, Call of the Wild. In this episode, the Predacons steal the Energon shielding system from the Axelon, and the Maximals are forced to stay in beast mode, and the instincts of their animal counterparts begin to take over. So, uh, M, you were saying you didn't fully understand what was going on at the start. I think this is what, uh, that part where they stole the Energon shielding from the ship, you didn't follow what was going on I think on at there? the very beginning, yeah, I didn't follow what had happened to put them in the situation where they couldn't transform. Or didn't want to transform. Right. And then I guess when they had uh, stayed in their beast modes long enough, they said they'd sort of, uh, the, the characteristics of those beasts kind of came out. Yeah. And well, you saw that. Like normal personality. You saw that earlier, even before the energy shielding system was taken because um, uh, Cheetor was having a sleep. And then it was actually him in a dream chasing another animal. And he was basically having a nightmare. And that sort of played into what happened later on where their animal uh, counterparts were sort of taking over. It was an early sign of, their, of how their animal instincts were taking over what their, uh, their uh, robot characteristics were all about, right? Yeah, I was a little surprised to, to see him uh, sort of aggressive like that. I guess it was in the dream sequence because we haven't really seen that at Cheetor. Uh, at all in the series like he's uh, to me he comes across as very youthful he's a jokester yeah yeah he's, he's just he's not aggressive like that and uh obviously as the episode progressed we were seeing all of them you know uh behaving a lot more aggressively like that i find there's a lot of violence in this episode too beyond them chasing each other down and the hunting sequences like uh primal got shot in the chest which i mean never happened in the g1 cartoon Putting aside the 1986 movie where everybody died. Well, it's not the first time he was shot in this in this show, but um, you're right. This, this certainly was a more aggressive one where they started off with uh, the uh, Predacons attacking, attacking the Maximal ship. And actually used a pretty good strategy in terms of luring everybody out and whatnot. Um, I actually like this episode compared to the last couple ones. Um, one, I was awake for all of it. So I had the energy for that. Yeah, that was a nice treat. I fully got to enjoy it with you and Bill. And um, the only thing I didn't like about it really was it was sort of, they did that play on how, I forget what movies have done it in the past, but where it shows like, uh, you know, some other animal characteristic or whatever you want to call it, taking over or, or starting to show its predominant self. Um, I guess what one early one I could think of would be like uh, Goldblum and the Fly, right? Bill would appreciate that. Yeah, I guess. Uh, T3, you know? Yeah. Just think past your programming. Yeah. It, it, what was, was that? T3? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. but T3, it was, it was actually just she reprogrammed him, and he was going to kill everybody. Yeah, but, but then that's they just talked that's just programming. It. It's not like uh, it's a thing. It's like, whereas really with about? the fly, it was um, Goldblum was human, but then he got integrated with the fly characteristics. So those were starting to come through, even while he still looked. Yeah, you're human, right. right. That's a direct. Although he was actually but... becoming a, a fly, as opposed to the right. um, what was the wolf movie with Jack Nicholson? I guess he was probably becoming a wolf as well. 
just like Andy I think it was just called Wolf, wasn't it? Was it called Wolf or Wolfen? Wolf. Wolf. Wolf, yeah. Yeah, because I remember some of those characteristics came out. But again, he was becoming a wolf as well. Oh, yeah, I guess really, you're right. Um, um, again, it, and this didn't. This was one of those episodes as well where it didn't push the storyline any further, um, which is fine. It was still, for me, it was fairly entertaining, and I enjoyed. Um, again, it, it it portrayed and showed um, two of the newer characters, I guess, a bit more as well. Uh, yeah. Tigatron and uh, Air Razor. Yeah, I, I got to say, it was a little corny when they were carrying Megatron through the jungle, kind of on a throne. I, yeah. I, just, I didn't get that. Why Why would the uh, uh, Predacons be doing that? I think it was just a bit of silliness that the, the creators put in. I was trying to think, are they alluding to maybe even referencing other movies or other Could have been. media or something? Or to me, that part was just a bit silly. Um, I did enjoy the episode. It didn't progress the storyline at all, but uh, it, uh, uh, it was entertaining, i got to say. Uh, yeah. Bill, what do you think? Mm. Nah. Not feeling it? <laughs> no, not feeling it. You were never a fan of the Beast Wars, though, right? No, like, g give me my old-fashioned 90s cartoons, you know, Spider-Man and X-Men and Transformers. Uh, now we're getting into this early CG animation. Just turned me off immediately back in the day. Although, I love the reboot. So that's Reboot weird. was great. I love Reboot. Did they? And, and Reboot came out around the same time as this, It was right? on at the same time, yeah. Um <clears throat> That was, that was airing on YTV, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it Canadian? I, I was think it, it was. Was it strictly Canadian? Or did it... And then they did a reboot of Reboot yeah. later on. Maybe I don't think it lasted very long, though. Let's see. What did they call the reboot of Reboot? I think it just Reboot. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, the <laughs> episode... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like you said, there's a lot of corny elements. There's a lot of... Uh, the guns were very ineffective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of ineffective gunfire. Uh, it did have, like you guys already alluded to it, with the T3 thing, with the uh, think past your programming. Yeah, like, the oversimplified me. ending. Like I find a lot of these episodes, if they were two-parters or even just longer than the allotted, what would it be, 22 minutes or something, they could maybe do a bit more with it. But Tigatron literally making eye contact with them and each of them letting out a roar and then somehow overcoming this. Yeah. All of them able to overcome it with a bit, you know, simplified. But again, I guess, it, you know, it is aimed at kids and we're, we're picking, apart, uh, picking it apart as adults. But uh, I, I got to say, though, yeah, I mean, uh, there, yeah, there was certainly some corniness. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't think it holds a candle to the original series? Like, could you sit down and watch G1 stuff right now? Like original... Yeah, Not yeah, and I'm, I'm actually doing that when my uh, smallest, my littlest child, uh, she likes watching with me. We're going through the series now. You have the whole series? Mm, am I missing? I think I'm missing. No, I think I have it complete now. Yeah. yeah. Were those the ones you were supposed to sell me? Mm. Mm, yeah, the one who's really a Transformer fan. Don't forget, you have to input the 86 movie in there be before the last season. Like that fits into the con uh, the uh, continuity, right? We did watch most of the movie. Uh, she didn't. Uh, she wasn't holding attention through the whole thing, so we moved on to the series. Even with the rocking soundtrack, and she's like, and "Hey, can we watch more Power Rangers? You mean Transformers? Yeah, whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever that thing was that we watched last time." And then she'll constantly call them, "Who's that Power Ranger right there?" It's Transformers. Power Rangers. How old your How old your daughter? Six. Okay, it's disrespect. So, yeah, and then again, the whole thing with Transformers as animals, I never liked that. Going back in the day. What about some? Because yeah, I yeah. like robots yeah. in disguise the, as vehicles. He hates the Dinobots. That's the fun. Oh, what? What about the Insecticons? Same thing. No, I don't. Yeah. No, it's those it's, are like five, it's five. jump the shark at that point. I those like. are eight of the key major characters in the G one line. Well, let's stick to cars and trucks and jets and okay, I'll take a sound wave. I'll take a ghetto blaster. Or, I love all that stuff, uh, but but it's hardly robots in disguise. Like what yeah. mechanical Tyrannosaurus Rex? Like how would that fool anybody? That's right. That's why I didn't like them. Yeah. So I, I, I can see the argument, but I still love them back then. I thought even how they showed how they were uh, 
how they were built back then, how they were created. Sure. It was one of the few times, because uh, later I know in the G1, characters would just appear with no explanation, but they actually had gone through the effort of coming up with a five minute, you know, wheeljack creating them and taking bones and all that. Oh. And I always found that kind of interesting. Yeah, that interesting. is interesting. You don't like the beast ones. Uh, what about so anything like well, look at back then this is what we like we like you know dinky cars and toy cars and robots and then transformers combine that so that was the best of everything yeah and mm -hmm. then uh, you know they did that stuff so let's move wholeheartedly into spider-man or he-man at that point a lot more he-man for me you were a fan of he-man right john yeah i liked it love that love the cartoon uh, i had a couple figures and that was it yeah, I never owned a He-Man. My friends, had, my my one really close best friend always had like all the coolest toys. So he had the Gray Skull Castle, and well, it, was, it was him and his brother. So I guess they sort of piled up a pretty good collection. Did you have any of that stuff, Bill? Yeah, for sure. I had some figures, and I don't think I had Gray Skull, but I had the uh, the other one, Snake Mountain. Yep. And I think I might have even had. Remember when they introduced? Uh, that other bad guy, what the hell's his name? Hordak? I was going to say Hodor. <laughs> it was not Hodor, yeah. Hordak, he had a something. He had a playset too. I think I might have had him. There's a playset, I think it's called Eternia, that's supposed to be, if I have the name right, that's super rare. It's worth more than like Grey Skull or something, because I guess it would be later in the line when, you know, they just didn't produce the, the playsets and the figures in, in great numbers. But if it's something like that, I mean, I guess you don't have it anymore. No, my, you know, that was in the back of the closet for a little while. And then I got home from school and thought, yeah, I wonder what that stuff's doing. And uh, my mother had gotten rid of it. Ages. She said, oh, someone, uh, you know, Chris at work, his uh, daughter likes these, I heard. So we gave them all. Like the Snake Mountain, I remember, had a had like a silicone puppet part of it or something. Like you... You could make a snake I think out of the silicone. Did, it had the microphone as well, right? Oof, I don't remember that. One of them had a microphone. But um, so stories like that make me sad yeah. when somebody goes, you know, hey, I'm just here to collect my old toys, Mom. Oh, we gave those away to your cousins, something like that. Or even, if you're, gone. Or even if you're still living there and come home one day from school and your mom's cleaned, cleaned out your bedroom yeah, or something. Yeah, that totally happened. Yeah, she wouldn't let stuff stick around. Yeah, you're too old for that. Luckily, I kept hold of some comics, but... You ever have your mom clean out your bedroom and find other material you didn't want her to find? Dirty mags. Why are you looking at me? Because <laughs> we're asking you. Uh, no, I don't think so. Not so much. I did have a nice stash of uh, ditch porn, though, at one point. Well, we've talked about that before. Go through the SDC archives. Uh, search... Search term uh, ditch porn. Ditch porn. And, uh, Hashtag. Uh, <laughs> we've all had ditch porn, right? M? What is that? You find it? You uh, find I used to find them in the like in a park. Yeah, in the forest. When I was a kid, but I don't remember taking it home. I think I was, I don't know if I was scared to take it home, but we would look at it in the forest. And I think this was explicit stuff. I think one of my cousins took one home and he used to, he hid it in the, like the rafters of the garage or something like that and you take it down every so often but i don't remember ever taking one from the forest home i don't know if i was scared or i didn't know where to hide it or i think the first one i found was called swank oh yeah swank <laughs> i think i made uh m buy buy one for me too hey now well we weren't kids when you had me do that <laughs> no well we were, we were still teenagers yeah you were just embarrassed I don't know why I even did that. Like, did you pay me or something? Or I just did it because I'm a nice guy. Uh, why would I do that? Oh, sure, Joe. You don't want to do it, so I'll just go up to the cute uh, uh, cashier. You're just being nice. That's all. Are you sure you weren't with me? I was with you. Yeah, that probably was. Well, no, was I idea. in the store? Yeah, I, yeah, I was in the store because I seem to remember the girl saying, "I think you made a joke or something." <laughs> and then the girl actually said, "You guys just go and enjoy." It. Like, you guys just go and enjoy this. It's like, oh, I should have just gone in there. Or you, manned up and just done it on our own. You can't do that with a friend. It's interesting how even back then he had you doing stuff. He's, he's a master. No. He is it's, a master. It's bros helping bros, bros out. Bros helping bros. Yeah. That's our new model. Bros help bros. I remember uh, from the ditch, too. That was my first cigarette. 
found a pack of palm malls in the ditch. Palm malls like a, were heavy. like a parcel. Huh? It was it was open, but they were all in there. Like so, well, palm malls were really super harsh, heavy duty, filtered with smokes. Oh, wow. And so someone must have bought them and tried one. Went forget this and <laughs> threw them in the ditch. And then me as a fourteen year old or something climbing a pack of smokes out there. Mm, could try this. That was a hell of a first smoke. Oh, that that was a good head rush. Wow. Palm malls. Remember in I've Stephen never, King? Uh, I've never even heard of those. No. What was it? The dark half. Uh, the, the writer, when he wrote, would only smoke Pall Malls. That's how I knew about them. Wow. Okay, guys. Well, we've come to that point in the show again where we need to wrap things up. And before you leave, just want to quickly remind everybody once again where you can find all three of us. You can follow me on Twitter at AC Decepticon. You can follow M on Instagram at Transformers and Beer. You can follow Bill on Twitter at STC Pod. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channels, Transformers and Beer, as well as Start to Continue. Uh, bookmark the websites angrycane, septicon.blogspot.ca, as well as stcpod.com. And listen to us on iTunes under the title searches Transformers and Beer Podcast, as well as STC Pod. If you're listening to us, uh, or either of our shows, you got to check out some of the great podcasts, blogs, and videos from people in our community at cartridgeclub.org. And as always, both shows are posted early Friday morning, and we appreciate everybody tuning in to both of them. So, yeah, just to reiterate, this is the crossover episode between STC Pod and Transformers and Beer. And this episode will be released simultaneously in simulcast on both feeds. So if you're listening to this on one, you don't have to go over and grab the other. Unless you want to, sure, go ahead and give us more downloads. But that's the deal. And uh, speaking of stcpod.com, did you notice that there's actually a new blog post on there? I did because you made me look at it. <laughs> so oh, You did a great job on it, too. Yeah, well, it's a couple week, weeks old now, but... If you didn't, haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's a bunch of uh, pictures of a super old microphone I found out thrifting. So, yeah, check it out on the website. It's nice to see some content on the website, which means it's your turn to write something after that. What do you think about that, boss? Are you pointing at me? Yeah. Hmm. All right, just for you, I will. All right. Uh, well, since it is a big cross episode, Who's the guest on who here? I, M, you're the guest on SDC, and I'm the guest on TMB. That's right. We always let our guests sign off. That's right. I've been waiting uh, two and a half years to say this. I'm going to savor this moment. Post it and post it. Bill, did you uh, anything you want to say? Signing off. Hey guys, Dean Lasagna here from Round Two Gaming, and I wanted to quickly jump in to let you know about one of my favorite gaming podcasts, Flock Talk. Miles, Chris, and Catherine put on a fantastic show for you each and every month, covering theme topics ranging from puzzle games and escape rooms to gaming aspirations and best of moments. Whether you're into video games or board games or card games, I guarantee you'll find that geek culture enjoyment you're looking for. Hilarious hosts, witty banter, top-notch quality, Flock Talk from the Flock of Nerds crew, check them out on iTunes, or head on over to www.cartridgeclub.org to join in the fun.